That's amazing, isn't it? Have a look in slow motion. Apparently everybody was okay. What's interesting is that the lady that was in the car to the left there of the lightning strike reported that the lightning knocked out all of her elect electrics, like an EMP, like an electromagnetic pulse. I found that interesting. Hello and welcome to News from the Fringe. My name's Chris. So, if you guys saw my latest video that I posted, um, you would have noticed, because I told you, that um, I'm going to start doing audio only for the stories. There's a few reasons. One is to save time. Two is because I think a lot of people, not a lot, but probably about 50%, as someone suggested in the comments, 50% um, of people say, just listen to it anyway. And also, I had a third point, but I can't remember it right now. Forget the third point. But what I'm going to do from now on is post those audio only stories. Oh, that's right. I remember now. <laughs> the third point was um, some people, they didn't really complain, but a couple of people did, none of you guys. But they preferred just to have the stories without my commentary. So I had to think about it and I think I'll be able to post more often if I do the audio only. And then I can post my commentary on these videos. And so speaking of which, let's do that right now. So the first story was called The Hooded Thing. And I'll just do a quick summary here. So there was a woman from rural North Georgia who goes online by the name Girl Interrupted. And she was forced to stop behind a vehicle which had stopped at a stop sign in front of a local cemetery. Almost immediately, her little Jack Russell dog began growling and the dog was very agitated and started barking. The dog's behavior was unusual, and it frightened the woman because she had never seen a dog act like that before. It was then that she noticed what was upsetting the dog so much. She saw a small three-foot person in a black robe who was walking through the cemetery. This thing was short and squat and moved like a bipedal creature, but with a strange gait. The creature stopped and turned its head, seemingly as a reaction to the barking dog, and then it ran off and ex and then it ran off at an explosive, supernatural speed, disappearing almost in an instant. The woman never saw the creature's face. She spoke with people from the other vehicle, and they exchanged details. The other witnesses, who were a married couple sent girl interrupted an email describing the incident from their point of view. I won't go into the uh, details of the email here, but it corroborates her story, and you can find it on the um, Strange House in Africa video if, you in <clears throat> if you're interested. So there's a few extra details that girl interrupted included in her description that I didn't include in the original video just to keep that video flowing. But... um. They don't really add extra, they just... Here, I'll read them to you. I just did a search on Google Images. I can't really find anything that's a close match. I'd say that this is the closest, but it was shorter and like more squat. And you can see that photo there, which I did include in the video. And like some of you said, it looks, it does look like uh, those little midget things from Phantasm and also the Jawas from uh, Star Wars. Here's a few extra descriptions from Girl Interrupted describing the creature. It moved away so fast that it unnerved me. I didn't see it shimmer or anything. The only threatening thing was the way my dog was behaving, and it just filled me with a sense of unease, like I was seeing something I shouldn't be. I kept expecting it to come at me. I didn't see any kind of face. It was more of a feeling that it turned to look when it heard the dog barking. It was the way it just stopped, and I felt cold chills all over me. It was the single most unnerving thing I've experienced. It was short and very squat. If it was a dwarf, it was overweight. It had a lot of substance to it. 
very stocky. And so within the thread, there's the usual uh, potential perpetrators like greys. Some people mentioned on my comment section that it reminds them of the the blues, I think they're called. Those little fat, ugly little things in hoods that accompany the greys. Sometimes you hear about them in reports. Uh, the duende, which is what I thought of straight away. And it's an interesting suggestion because there was a video that was posted in the thread, which has been removed. And the witness said that that was pretty much exactly what she saw. And I suspect it was, I'll see if I can find the video on YouTube, but um, it's an old video and it's this little gnome looking thing that's sort of like got this weird gait and he's like limping towards these kids and the kids see it and it just keeps coming towards them and then they run off. There was also this suggestion from this guy from a paranormal investigation team called Wisps. And I'll quote him. These entities are small cloaked figures known as Genicuculati. Genicuculati. And they usually work in threes. And so I did a bit of a quick search on these things. And there is such a... I don't know if it's a phenomenon, but it's these artifacts from ancient Britain and um, the historians don't really know what they represent but there's quite a lot of them through Europe and I think especially Britain um, and they tend to they match this description of a small squat hooded person but generally they're in groups of three for some reason <clears throat> so that'll be something interesting to look into I couldn't find much information on the uh, Gini Kukulati. I'm saying that pretty well today. So what did I find? I did find this from occultworld.com. Gini Kukulati manifest as different ages, young, mature or old. Not all are male. However, in groups of three, at least one is consistently male, or at least among the images so far are unearthed. Many, but not all, seem to be dwarves. So it would seem these things have been seen for centuries, maybe even millennia. It's really interesting. And they're not just seen through Europe because there's sightings of them through, I know, through uh, the USA and also South America, down into Mexico and South America. Um, there's, they're probably all over the world. But yeah, there you go. Something to think about. Let's have a look at the next story. The Devil's Bridge. Here's the summary. Flexi, who's the witness's name, his um, handle, his username in the forum. So Flexi, while growing up in remote and rural Germany, took a trip to his grandparents who lived in a dense ancient forest near the Czechoslovakian border. There's an old forest path that leads to a bridge called Devil's Bridge. It's so called because of the legendary devil that haunts the area. The family decides to take the old road due to the main road being flooded when they encounter the legendary devil. So it sounds like a bit of a cliche horror movie plot, but he's got a photo to, uh, to back his story up. Whether his photo is, um, you know, good enough to to pass scrutiny, I'll let you decide. Uh, before we talk about that though, I just wanted to mention, I did do a search online to see if there was some sort of legend uh, about this Devil's Bridge near Czechoslovakia in Germany. I couldn't find anything in English, but there could be something on a German web website, you know, who knows. But have a look at this photo. So my instinct is, it's a hoax. I mean, you got to be down to earth about these sort of things. It is a creepy looking mask, and it could be some sort of Halloween photo, or just a prank, straight up prank. It looks like it's night time there, but he did say the forest is so old and overgrown that it's it was dark inside this old forest. 
So that explains that, potentially. Um, it does look like the photo was taken rapidly. Maybe from a moving car, as he claims in the story. So that sort of fits his story. And it's... I've only just noticed this. Is that so-called devil holding something up there? Yeah. See, I thought when I first looked at it, I thought this branch here ran all the way down to the trunk. But you can see his bent arm there in front of him. He's actually standing in front of the tree. And the other arm here looks almost skeletal. And it looks like he's holding something. What that is, I have no clue. But that finger looks very extended and long. I still think it's a hoax, because I'm that way inclined, but that makes it a little bit more interesting. Oh, I just realised I missed a story. I skipped one. The Strange House in Africa story. So let me just quickly summarise that for you. This guy Mowgli, that's his, again, the username... The witness, Mowgli, makes a new friend in Africa. His name's Eofin, and they become good friends. He spends a lot of time at Eofin's house and is friendly with everybody there, including their protective Alsatian. One day, while sitting in the lounge room, Mowgli sees Eofin's dad walk past him, through the lounge room and into the bedroom. His dad is acting very strangely, though. He has this very jerky movement as he walks, and he has a blank expression on his face. As he passes Mowgli, he doesn't take his eyes off him, staring at the boy constantly. As soon as the father disappears into the bedroom, Irfan walks in, cheerful as ever. Mowgli tells him about his dad walking past and acting very strangely, when Irfan, confused, tells Mowgli that his father is actually in the kitchen. Mowgli then confirms this, and he's shaken up and goes back home. The next day, Mowgli feels drawn to go back to the house looking for answers. When he gets there, he finds that the house has been abandoned by the family. However, their Alsatian is still present and is now unnaturally aggressive towards the boy, chasing him off the property. I just wanted to mention here too, in the story, I'm surprised no one picked me up on it, but I mispronounced... Ah, I was going to say it again. I said Malawi, and I meant to say Malawi. Someone's going to pick me up on it, I'm sure. That's an African nation, Malawi. Malawi. So, my first thought was doppelgangers, which is, as you all know, an apparition of a living person. So, I've got some notes here, so I'm just going to read them. So, it was possibly a projection of the father, a subconscious projection. Because mystics and um, occultists and spiritualists, they say that we've got several layers to, our, to ourself. There's the physical body, the astral body, subtle body, light body, mental body, etc. And so maybe this was like a subconscious projection by the father who was in the kitchen doing his work there, but he was thinking about something that needed to be done in the bedroom. And so subconsciously projected one of those subtle bodies there. And this is what Mowgli's picked up on. But considering all of the other activity, um, it's more likely to be a malicious entity that's imitated his father. The jerky movement and the, the concentration that this entity had staring at the boy. Just, it's, to me, a subconscious projection would be Sort of like an apparition where it's unaware of its environment, but this thing seemed to be aware of the boy. And so that's why I'm leaning towards some sort of negative entity. That and also the fact that the family abandoned the house and also the, the behavior of the dog, which changed dramatically. It wanted to attack the kid at the end. And so you get this impression that maybe the house is influenced or... Um, possessed the dog. These are just ideas. It's a pretty cool story, I thought. All right, let's continue with a little bit of news. Have a look at this video. So, this 
So unfortunately it's blurry footage as usual. He's got a strange posture and it, it doesn't look like he's got clothes. Thinking potentially he's got a beard, but it's hard to say because it could be his hand. I'll take it back and we'll have a quick look at that. Do you think that's his hand or is that a beard? What's annoying too about these sort of videos is it always cuts away before we see what the entity does. Like, does he walk off the, the edge of the camera there or, you know, like, why can't we see it to the end? I really don't have a lot more to say about that one. So let's have a look at this next story here. Oh yeah. Sporting a, sporting a translucent gelatinous body with white spots and a suction cup on its belly, this bizarre creature is known as a blotched snailfish, or this. It lives deep down on the ocean floor at depths of over 2,700 feet and is found only in the North Pacific. According to scientist Sarah Friedman, the fish is very gelatinous to the touch. This is thought to be an adaptation to maintain neutral buoyancy and efficiently swim while coping with the crushing pressure of the deep sea, she said. And check this out. US fisherman Lars Johan Larsen caught this extremely rare blue oyster, the coloration being due to a rare genetic abnormality. According to the Lobster Institute at the University of Maine, the odds of discovering one of these brightly coloured crustaceans is a mere one in two million. Larson released the animal back into the ocean. Quote, this blue lobster was caught off the coast of Portland yesterday and returned to the water to continue to grow, he wrote. This story surprised me in a couple of ways. Firstly, he threw it back. I mean, that's good that he did. I'm glad he did. But it surprised me that he did because he could have, he probably could have sold that for a lot of money to a restaurant maybe, or he could have given it to science so that they could, you know, they've got this bright blue specimen that they can photograph and, you know, do whatever scientists do with lobsters. And the second thing that I've got up here, and now that I'm thinking about it, when I read this story, I was surprised to hear that there's such a thing as a lobster institute. And it makes me wonder what the hell that is. Like, is there a prawn institute? I hope so. All right, let's get on to the next one. Ancient flying nightmare. Found in the Andes Mountains and dating back 86 million years ago, a new species of pterosaur has been discovered in Argentina's western Mendoza province. It measures up to 30 feet or 9 meters in wingspan. That's a big chicken. Named Thanatos Dracon Amaru, or Dragon of Death, this prehistoric behemoth does not belong to any previously known genus. Quote, We don't have a current record of any close relative that even has a body modification similar to these beasts, said project leader Leonardo Ortiz. Researchers described the find as the largest pterosaur that crossed the Cretaceous skies of South America discovered so far. Do you reckon humans, if humans and dinosaurs coexisted, would the human race survive? Because you were smart. We are smart. I guess we would if we got past the tool making stage, if we could get past that. But otherwise, we've got no chance, have we? US Navy files accidentally released. 
So this is a long article, but I'm just going to summarize it a little bit for you and just throw in a few highlights from the article. Um, cl- the article claims that more than 60 pages on the encounters, these encounters with drones. So they're not talking about UFOs the way we think of UFOs. These are identified as um, just, just your standard drones sort of thing. So more than 60 pages on the encounters were uploaded by the military with the file name Proposed Redaction, suggesting the unaltered documents were not meant for public release. There's this one interesting incident that I want to read out to you, and it gives you a sense of what the rest are like. So in one of the most striking encounters, the USS Bunker Hill tracked 11 unidentified drones. The drones, described as quadcopter style, ranged in altitude from 14,000, sorry, 1,400 feet to a staggering 21,000 feet. Maps published in the files show the drones circling the warships from around 4 a.m. to 6 p.m. In the area close by to the warship was the Hong Kong-flagged bulk carrier merchant vessel Bass Strait, who the U.S. vessel attempted to contact but received no response. It is suspected that some of the drone incidents may have been attempts to spy on U.S. warships, such as the one involved with the USS Paul Hamilton. The destroyer was sailing to Long Beach when it spotted three drones flying overhead, and once again, the merchant vessel Bass Strait was lurking in the area. It's interesting, isn't it? I wanted to include this article not because these are sightings of UFOs, but because the... US government has been leaking a lot of unidentified drone-like files and videos lately and it got me thinking it made me a little bit suspicious and so you see in this recent war in in the Ukraine how extensive drone warfare has become Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about look into it you'll be probably not surprised But I was wondering, it got me thinking, like, is the U.S. purposely, purposefully releasing this information, not so much to cover up their own technology, but more so to give a heads up or to to talk to the other foreign military analysts and they're actually showing um, how advanced the U.S. drone technology is with videos like the Tic Tac UFO video, are they saying to to other military, foreign military analysts, look what we've got, you know, don't mess with us, we're decades ahead of you guys. And that's what I reckon's going on. At least I'm leaning that way, but who knows? Who knows? Okay, so I've had a quick look through my Word document here, and there's no more stories, not for today. So, I'm going to have to bid you farewell, and um, I hope you have a good day, or a good evening. Evening? Yes. But before I do, actually, um, I told Nancy in the comments section that I was going to show her some of my Bob Ross art. So, I'll have a, I'll, I'll chuck them up there for you, just at the end here. Have a look. I'll see you next time. Thank you.